Hello. Today we're going to create a microservice that allow us to generate a PDF. Now, uh, this solution is different from the usual uh, implementation that others do where they use an ITEX and its API to create a PDF. What we are going to do is we're going to use JasperSoft uh, we, we have a drag and drop software where we could design our PDF here and uh, this one will generate a GRXML file. This GRXML file uh, we are going to use as our template to create a PDF and we just need to pass the data that we are going to need to to generate this uh, PDF file. So the first thing that you should do is download the JasperSoft Studio, uh, which is on this link. Uh, they have a community edition that you can use for uh, the usual uh, PDF reports that you want generated. So let's go here on our uh, JasperSoft uh, Studio. So let's try to create first a simple PDF uh, with uh, our data. So what I did, uh, I created a JSON file called record that JSON and inside that file we have a, a JSON string with the property rec data and the Within the rec data, we have the name property and uh, the name itself. So we're going to use this one as our uh, data source. So how to use this Jasper Soft Studio on data adapter? You could do the right click and create a data adapter. There are several uh, data adapter that you could use as your data source for your reports but uh, on our case we just select the json file then just click next okay and here uh, let's name this one say uh, record uh, adapter and then the url itself let's uh, browse to that uh, folder uh, which is on the data and then the record okay then just leave all these uh, uh, details as is then uh, we can just click uh, finish okay so let's try to create our uh, report so on the file, there's new and then Jasper report. And then from here, you have templates that you could use. Uh, let's just use the blank one. I'll click next. And then uh, this is just a name, whatever name you want it uh, to be. Say example, I just want it to be report. Okay. And then the data adapter that we're going to use is the record adapter that we did earlier. And then if you notice, it uh, shows here the properties of that uh, uh, JSON uh, file. So from here, uh, we could use uh, click direct data, then click next. And then uh, this one is optional, so uh, we don't need that one next and then finish. Okay. So let's just uh, display the name in the title uh, section. So if you go to the preview right now, uh, there won't be any uh, data at all shown since uh, we haven't yet mapped the field name to the report itself. Let's go back to the source and see uh, our data. All right, so we have here uh, our C data query string. Uh, let's change this one to JSON QL. 
JSON query language and uh, let's change this to dollar period to signify that uh, we will we'll actually uh, load uh, the whole record but uh, uh, currently we only have the name property okay then after that one i just went ahead to put in the section which is the field so uh, this section uh, signifies that uh, we're going to use the name field from direct data uh, which is uh, this one so if you have multiple fields here on your array uh, data json object you also need to specify here if uh, you're going to use it on your report uh, of course you need to specify if uh, the data type uh, here is a string and then the property name which is a json field expression then on the title section uh, since we already uh, specified or declared the field name name here uh, we're now able to use that on our text field expression so if you go to the design you will see something like this but then if you go to the preview uh, you'll be able to see the result which is uh, John Doe now if you change this one see let's see if uh, okay the name value has changed since on our um, json file here we changed this one all right so that's uh, just a basic uh, usage of this tool which is a jasper studio now in our program uh, we're going to create a a java program to do the same but this time uh, the data being uh, displayed on the pdf is dynamically created using uh, being passed to our application so uh, let's try to look at the structure first of the project so if you notice the report xml is here this is just the basic uh, grxml file that we create on uh, on the jasper uh, studio so we put it here on the template uh, folder and then uh, below here if you're going to use fonts so you should create a file called fonts xml uh, and that uh, specify the fonts that you are going to use so here you have a font family uh, which is on the location asset fonts aerial uh, ttf which is here uh, on the resources folder asset font and then the ttf file same also with the image you can put it here on the asset folder now uh, one important file uh, that you should think about is uh, this one since the jasper report underscore extension that properties is used uh, by the application itself to load the font so what is the content of this file so here uh, it's just a registration of the extension itself which is the font uh, which is the net sf jasper report engine font simple font extension registry and then the simple font families uh, is the font xml which is the file we declared here now uh, during runtime it will load all the font declared on the font xml so let's go to the code application properties is just the normal uh, config file of uh, spring boot uh, we're in here we just uh, specified the font to port uh, 9000 
So let's go to the code itself. Okay, so it's just a normal REST controller wherein we have the request mapping API v1 PDF. Then we have get mapping that allow us to accept a parameter which is called a full name. Now this section here, uh, of course, uh, we could uh, have a better uh, structure of a code here, but uh, basically since this is just a demo uh, to make this uh, PDF generation work, uh, I just put it everything in the controller. Uh, so what happened here, the code uh, uh, signifies that uh, uh, we're going to create a file called data.json in this location. And this section is actually uh, we, 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 the, the full name that we accept from the parameter we assign to name. And then the whole, this one, the whole JSON object, we put it inside the test uh, data uh, object itself. And this one will generate a data.json file. So we'll show later how it is done so i'll close this one and then uh, for us to see the generated file uh, let's delete this one uh, so currently it's uh, empty then uh, here uh, we just create the file and then close uh, the, the output stream then this Input stream, main GRX ML stream, is actually uh, we're going to get the compiled version of the GRX ML. So if you notice here on the resource folder, there is no Jasper uh, folder. Uh, during compilation, it will create this folder, Jaspers, and it will uh, compile this template grxml into that jasper report then uh, the data that we pass to the report itself is passed to this uh, jasper data map so file path uh, that is the file path of the data json which currently is not yet there uh, which we're going to create uh, on the fly later. Then this is sub report. So uh, you could actually create a report that has sub reports. So uh, you can also load that one to uh, Jasper Data a map. For simplicity, uh, we didn't uh, design the report with sub report. Then uh, this is the meat of the program uh, where uh, the GRXML is loaded uh, to the Jasper report and then the Jasper report itself is mapped to the uh, Jasper data map which is also our data and then uh, assigned to the uh, Jasper print and this Jasper print we pass as parameter to export report to PDF file. This one and the PDF file is uh, the one we specify here. So uh, later it will be named report that uh, PDF. All right. So how are all these? How is the report GRXML uh, compiled into Jasper? And uh, from which library are all these uh, API belong to. So if we go to our POMXML, let's look at here. We have the Jasper report A dependency. Uh, currently we're just uh, using 6.20.1. Uh, so that is the Jasper report dependency that you're going to uh, use then uh, 
when you use this one, uh, make sure that you're also going to add this dependency, which is the antler runtime. Since if you don't have this antler runtime, it uh, won't, uh, it will throw you an exception. Uh, for the compilation and generation of the Jasper file, uh, from grxml there is a plugin that you need to add in here which is called jasper report maven plugin uh, from here uh, uh, the, the goal is compile report and if you notice uh, it's on the resource template folder uh, with the extension grxml and then it will compile it uh, using the GR Java compiler uh, from the dependency itself and then it will output the uh, Jasper file in the Jasper folder okay so uh, with its uh, plugin the dependency is the Jasper report okay so let's check here so I'll go to maven and then uh, let's do a clean first. Okay. Uh, take note of the folder here on our resources asset template. And when I uh, click on the compile for Maven, so it will compile the our grxml a template and uh, it will create a uh, dot uh, jasper file all right so if you look at the resources folder it has now a jasper uh, folder so if you notice it's a report that jasper so this one is a compiled version of this grxml so you won't be able to uh, see the content of this one uh, on, on the editor itself okay so let's go so let's try this one let's run this uh, program all right our service is up so let's try to uh, run or hit the endpoint for the service which is on API v1 PDF and uh, it requires a parameter which is called a uh, full name uh, let's look at the folder here so we don't have any content here on data folder so curl HTTP localhost 9000 API v1 PDF and the para, uh, the yes parameter is full name let's say Tony take note uh, as parameter you cannot put space here if uh, you need to use the ASCII value percent 20 start start okay press enter all right so let's look at the data folder so you have now the data json file which is uh, this one it was created dynamically and then the report itself okay so uh, the value on the data file is now on uh, pdf so let's try uh, just to uh, validate that uh, uh, this is a dynamic uh, value that we pass so let's say Jane do okay press enter all right so let's go back to the data okay so we'll, the pass one is data and then the report PDF report has passed the uh, data Jane do Okay, so that's it. That's how to generate a PDF file uh, using uh, GRXML. Happy coding!